it's always good to come in the house of the Lord. You know, in the, in the course of just a few days, we have so much to be thankful for. You know, we, we always want to wake up praising the Lord. We want to go to bed praising the Lord. You know, you think about your blessings. I <clears throat> One person said you should count your blessings more than you do your heartaches. You know, we, we kind of tip the balance the other way. You know, oh, Lord, I got all this going on. God's aware of it. That's what I love about God. You know, he's aware of everything that's going on in your life. Nothing surprises him. Some people think God don't know what's going on. You know, when, whenever I see a picture of the Lord, you get that vision of the Lord. It's like Isaiah. You see him high and lifted up. Yes. You know, I never, ever have had a vision of, 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 of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit wondering what they're going to do. Yeah. Oh, man, we got to figure something out here. I don't know. They, they're, they're down there running amok and everything. What are we going to do? I never get that picture. Right. Not one time. It's like, in, and we would say in modern terms, God saying, I got this. Yeah. The only thing I want the people to do is just believe me. Yeah. And you could hear that cry in Jesus' voice so many times. Because he was always, it's, it's all, not that he was surprised, that's not the best thing to say. But he was always awed at people that had faith. Mm -hmm. He was awed at that. Because that person just believes me. Yeah. And can right. you imagine, you know, did Jesus come from heaven. It's the same way when Gabriel came down. You know, Gabriel, you know, and, and, and I always think about Zachariah, you know, because, it, it, you know, Zachariah, you know, Gabriel come and talk, you know, and, and he just didn't believe him. Just said, you don't, you don't understand. Now you're going to have to be dumb because you don't understand. I stand in the presence of God. Don't you understand? I'm delivering you this message. And so many times God does this in our life. Just believe me. I got your best interest in heart, in mind. That's what I always look at. I, you know, I, I was, um, I, I'm always got a message in me, so it didn't make any difference whether I'm standing up here or wherever I'm at, because you always got something that's birthed inside of you. Yes. You know, and, and sometimes it's just little things to see how God works. Um, um, my soulmate and I, Leah, we was out, and this is how God works. Only God could have get the timing. God knows how to get people together. Well, we, we had a uh, had, to, had to get a board to cover one of our tables in there because the glass got broke. And that was a miracle in itself because when the glass split out, it, it, it hit me right here on the wrist. It could have split my wrist. could have just nicked my finger a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's all it did. I mean, that could have shattered and, and done a lot of damage. Yeah. But see, it, it cut this finger here. You know what that's good for? I can always point to God <laughs> every day. And thinking, my, I still got my finger. Let me tell you. I'm telling because I'm thinking, you know, I mean, it didn't hurt or nothing. It didn't. It wasn't a big issue. But I'm saying that could have just sliced your finger yeah. off. Sure. So we had to go to a board replacement. So we went to Home Depot. And like I say, people say, well, Tim, it's just this coincidence. No, it's not coincidence. So we only need a board so big, right? Well, we couldn't put fit the rest of it in our vehicle. So we was going to take it back in and give it, you know, donate it to somebody so they can keep it. Because we didn't really need the rest of it. So he went back into Home Depot, and we went back to the register, and we told the lady that was there, said, we don't need it. But guess what? This guy comes up right at that, right at that time, uh -huh. that time of day. He said, well, we don't need it, you know, and then my better half asked, he said, asked the guy, do you need it? Sure, I can use it. Sure, I can use that board. I work for the Methodist Church. I do things over at the Methodist Church repair work. I could use that board, you know? <laughs> And he shook her hand. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you. God bless you. Yeah. Who could have timed that yeah. so you'd come right at that time and he worked for the church? Yeah. He got a free board. Didn't cost him anything. Yeah. Now, who could have done? Who could have got all that timing at that time of day, that size board, yeah. everything at that moment? And you know it was God. Yeah. And that's what God, God wants us to look at. It's just realize how many blessings God's give you in a day. Yeah. Celebrate God. Yeah. You know, lift him up. Everything you do. Because to tell you what, without God, where would we be? Exactly. You ever think about that sometime in your life? Where you could have been? You know, life might not be where you're at, but, but, but look how far you've come. Yes. That's what we want to look at. That's the only thing we should look at in the past is see how far we've come. Yes. You know, and see how where God brought you from. Amen. 
the one thing that God wants us to do more than anything is, you know, you ought to remember those days. I've said that to people. When God does a miracle in your life, you remember that day. Make a watermark for that day. They used to do it, and I said it before in the Old Testament, where they put stones up. Whenever they crossed that way again, they would remember that. And that's what God wants us to do, is remember those times in life he blessed you. Now, if he delivered you out of this situation, what makes you think he won't deliver you out of this situation? Hallelujah. Oh, God is good, folks. Ain't God good? Psalms 121. This is, this is when, I, when I was first a Christian, uh, we had old, old Deacon Stapleton. He loved this scripture. He would say this more than anything. Psalms 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills around Jerusalem to the sacred Mount Zion and Mount Moriah, from whence shall my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip or to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, who keeps Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is your keeper. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, that's enough to shout and run around the room. <laughs> the Lord is your keeper. <clears throat> and the Lord is your shade on your right hand, the side not carrying a shield. The sun shall not smite you by day nor by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. Listen to these words. He will keep your life. Oh, man. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Yes. Why are we going to be afraid? Exactly. Why are we going to be afraid? Right. It says it right here. He will keep your life. Right. And we know the word comes from God. Amen. And Jesus is the word. Yes. Right? And it comes from his word is true. Yes. You know, I always loved red letter editions. That was always a good, good Bible to have. You know? But the whole Bible is inspired by God. Exactly. That's right. the whole Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation. Exactly. And it always starts. You always look at the Bible. It starts what? In the beginning, God. That's what it starts, right? I always say this. I know I repeat myself, but I'm sorry I do. But I, I got to. It doesn't start with once upon a time. You ever knew that? The fairy tales start once upon a time in a land far away. Hallelujah. <laughs> it always starts. The fairy tales start. But this starts in the beginning, God. And what it say in Revelation? Jesus said, I am the beginning and the ending. Well, it looks like he framed himself, didn't he? He framed himself. And all we need to do, always look at Jesus at a book and he started in the beginning and we keep our lives in there. We're going to get all right. We're going to be all right. Amen. You know, the only, the, I, I think the only time we get off the path is when we take our eyes off Jesus. Yes. That's how we get off the path. Amen. You know, and we always, we, we, we hear those things so many times when Peter walked on the water. He was actually doing it. Yeah. Lord, if that's you, come. Now, we understand that, you know, it didn't take, I don't know how many steps he took. But I'm sure he started looking around yeah, <laughs> <You know? yeah. laughs> and said, wait, wait, <clears throat> I don't think I could do this, you know, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, and he's walking. He said, if, if that's you, Lord, I mean, come. And Jesus said, come. He didn't say, Peter, you know, you really think about this. You know, let's look at the mathematical formula with yeah. all this stuff. He just said, come. Yeah. You know yes. what? Jesus, just come. You know, it's almost like he put his hand up. Come. You know what Jesus, Peter did? Got out of the boat. Yeah. Yeah, and he just started walking. But, oh, you know what happened? He started looking around. Yeah. He saw these waves. And I'm sure he saw the faces of the guys on the boat. You know, their eyes about this big. Yeah. What, what is he doing? He's walking on the water. Probably heard, you can't do that, Peter. What do you think you're doing? Yeah. And the waves are rolling around, and he started to sink. Yeah. But, you know, he cried out. He knew how to cry out, Lord, save me. And that's one prayer needs to be answered right away. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. I mean, some prayers need to be answered right now. Yeah. And that was one of them. Yeah. But even though... Jesus is the resurrection. If Peter would have went under, God could have still raised him up. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. But we've got to look at that. Let's look at it. i this. Seven, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Yes. Let's look at that. Just take a look at what God is with you the whole time in your life. Before he was in your mom's belly, God knew you. That's fascinating to me. He knew your personality. You know, and you had kids, they all got different personalities. They could have the same mom and dad, and they're all different personalities. Yeah. You know, you got one, I had four sons, and every one of them different. Yeah. You got some that's really neat, yeah. keeps everything just right. And some, you better put a hazardous sticker yeah. before you go in the room, let me tell you. There might be something growing. There. <laughs> let me tell you. My one son, he, he wanted to get a boa constrictor for a pet. He's like, boa constrictor. So I promised him to never get out. Like, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. They get out. 
you got to come down here and fix your mayonnaise sandwich. And that steak is walking around the kitchen. <laughs> well, we know that ain't going to happen. Either that snake, snake goes or I'm going one or the two. You know, I ain't afraid, but I don't, I'm, you know, if, fish, if a snake's bigger than a fishing worm, I ain't really liking them, you know, I'm talking about. But, <clears throat> but you know what? This is where God wants us at, folks. He wants us to realize that we say we love him. We ought to prove him that we love him by believing him. You know, we, we often wonder, am I going to make rent? Did you make rent last month? Well, what makes you think you're not going to make rent this month? Right. And we've all had those days. Yeah. You know, you get paid on Friday and Thursday, buddy. Man, you know, you're afraid you make it home yeah. and can make it to the gas station. i never forget on, on Facebook, they have some funny stuff my cousin put on there. You know, he, he made Thursday supper because payday. He wrote, you know, the night before payday. So he had, he had, he had some dressing, but he didn't have no chicken. So he drew, he drew a picture of a chicken leg and put it on the plate. <laughs> I'm thinking, that's pretty bad. But I, but I can't eat the chicken leg on a paper, piece of paper. But I understand how you get those days, buddy. You know, the old woman in the shoe. I, I know I hear all this. Oh, you go there and ain't nothing. The old dog with the ball. Let me tell you, ain't nothing. But you know what? God's faithful. God is faithful. And that's what he wants us to do. The Bible says, Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. And we don't want to never forget that. He said his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It doesn't say my complaining shall continually be in my mouth. That's right. You know how, I'm telling you what, it wears a person's out. Person out here around somebody complains all the time. I, I have to get away from it. You know, if things are so bad, you know, some people complain about their job. And, you know, some people would like to have the job you got. Yeah. Exactly. They would like to have it. Uh -huh. And you're sitting there complaining about it. Uh -huh. Well, if you don't like it, you can find another job. I mean, you're not tied to it, yeah. you know. But you're sitting there complaining, but it's providing the income. Why don't you pray more for your, for your boss and that company more than you complain about? Yeah. Maybe things will change there. Maybe. What are you doing to change it? You know, complainers that never, no matter what you do for them, you could give them a $5 an hour raise, well, they could have gave us six. Yeah. You know, I've heard stuff like that. I said, man, you know the problem is, they could go the other way. Yeah. You ever think about that? They could start taking stuff away. Yeah. And, you know, you might be working for $18 an hour, the next day work for 10 yep. Now you got something really to complain about. Why'd you stop complaining and praise God? He's the one that provides for you. That's where it comes from. You know, I, I, I was thinking about my career and how many opportunities. You know God moved there. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't look good sometimes, but you know the Bible says all things yeah. work together for the good. And sometimes when, when your prayers <coughs> don't get answered the way you think, it doesn't mean they won't get answered. Yeah. It's that God has something better for you. Yeah. That's what I found out. When there's a lot of turmoil and stuff going on in your life, yeah. that's the way just to dig in. Yeah. I go Stonewall Jack, just dig in. Yeah. You know, sit in there. Right? Because God is getting ready to do something. Amen. Don't give up. Exactly. Don't give up. Keep yeah. rowing towards shore. So one person said, you both keep rowing. Keep rowing. Yeah. Keep rowing. Yeah. You know? And, and, and that's where a lot of people, you get so close to the finish line. Now, yeah. the Olympics are coming up. Yeah. And one thing I loved about the Olympics, I, I, I love the competition. But I, I love when they, when, the, when they run the 100 meters. Yeah. You know, I love to see, because they show that close up. And they show them down the starting blocks. And I love to see that. Because they show them guys or ladies, they're focused, man. Yeah. And I always thought, they get them close up. You saying Bolt was down there. And, 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 you, and it looking at his face, he, he's down like this. And I wonder what he thought about. Yeah. Huh, well, how am I going to celebrate this victory, you know? I'm going to go out dancing or whatever. Yeah. No, you know what he's thinking about. I mean, you can imagine what he's thinking. I'm thinking about the next 100 meters. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking about. There'll be time for celebrating, time for doing all that stuff later. But I need to stay focused on what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's where we get off. Yeah. You know, we let all these thoughts go out there. We need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes. Open this. Uh, Jesus, how the Lord is. And you, open, <coughs> and you started talking about counting our blessings. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, it might catch on. Yeah. That's and, right. And, you know, people might start <coughs> That's right. So, you know, I God. That's right. That's good. That's good. That is also good. <clears throat> yeah, we ought to refrain from complaining. That's what we ought to do. You know, the biggest thing for people control is this right here. Let me tell you. Because uh, it comes out. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Yeah, she said she was blessed. Yeah. You know, I'm so blessed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, I'll do the next one. That's right. On how good God is. That's right. Because that's right. That that's exactly right. To think about all the blessings God gave you, just count it up in one day. Exactly. Just one day, not a lifetime. Just one day. Yeah. You know, I, I I did that before, and and, and it's just like, man, there's just so many things you can be blessed, thankful for. I mean, your health. <clears throat> you got a roof, you know, over, and you got a car, and you got clothes, and you got all those things yeah. where everybody don't have them. That's right. You know, we we tend to think, you know, America's so blessed. You know, we, we, we think about it, but, you know, th th there's some people that don't have just the basic thing. Right. Sometimes we take for granted, you know, and, and we got to always be focused on God yes. and thank him and praise him. <clears throat> That's why I think it's so important for kids to learn to pray, you know, at that bedside is, is to pray for him and ask him, you know, do you have anything to pray for? And it's amazing what comes up with kids. Yes. And they get in that habit. <clears throat> and you don't want to get in the habit just to go to God and keep asking for stuff. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. But we want to also just praise God just for who he is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's nice just to say, God, I didn't come here to ask you for nothing. Exactly. You know, I just come to praise you today. Yeah. And thank you. Thank yeah. you for all the blessings you've given me. I just want to praise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else. Someone else. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Pastor. Well, I just want to praise the Lord for a uh, tremendous blessing we've received over the last week. And I won't go into all the details and say it's embarrassing to anybody, but we had a major issue come up, and God provided the, the uh, means to take care of it. Hallelujah. And I know it's the Lord, and I want to just really praise Him for that. Give a thanks for His faithfulness. Praise you know, the Scripture talks about giving, and giving unto you, pressed down, shaken together, man. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, we thank God for people, and we, we need to be sensitive when God is asking us to do things, and, you know, whatever it might be, because that may be that other person's opportunity to see God's faithfulness. That's right. You know, and, and so I'm just really appreciative of, of people who are sensitive to the Lord, but especially to God, and we need uh, that hand of mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's awesome. <coughs> that is so awesome. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go to God for a speedy recovery for my wife. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Amen. We'll definitely, <clears throat> definitely pray because that, that's uh, major things, you know. It's, and I appreciate prayers. Better half and I going down to see the grandkids and the boys uh, Saturday. Uh, they invite us down. We haven't seen <clears throat> grandbaby number 20. We haven't, we're going to go down. So I praise the Lord, little yeah. little as always. So they invite us down for the celebration they're having, and and you know that that is just such a blessing, you know, to 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 see your kids and your grandkids and sure. and to spend time with family, Amen. because there's one thing about it, we 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 look at the fact that we're planning for tomorrow. I mean that that's what you do, you plan for tomorrow, mm -hmm. but there's no promise of tomorrow, right. Right. and you want to see those kids and look at and hold them, and so they know who you are. Right. And you know what? We're going to hold it, and we're going to say, you know what? We're going to be praying for you. Yes. We're going to already start praying for them little kids right yes. there so God yes. can touch their lives. Amen. You know, my girls, my older girls, um, they were both dedicated to the Lord. Yes. And I, I remember the preacher saying, you know, when you dedicate your child, that's only one half. The other half is you got to stay dedicated. That's right. That's you know, right. it's, it's a balance there. Amen. And I just remember holding that child out to the Lord, and God has blessed them. Amen. And I just thank God for that. What greater thing, greater gift can you give than love of Christ to your kids? Yeah, yeah. What other, all the shoes and, and, and all that other stuff, <clears throat> you know, that, that stuff will be forgotten. Mm -hmm. It's good to provide for them that, but you know what? If you can give them the love of Christ where they can pray for themselves yeah. and pray for their kids, there ain't nothing more powerful than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else. 
All right, we'd like to go to prayer if you all stand. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for providing. We thank you for the prayer request that went up tonight. Lord, we thank you that our prayer goes straight up to the throne room. Hallelujah. That it doesn't just stop here at the ceiling. Because we see you high and lifted up. Hallelujah. And a train filled the temple. It's all about you, God. It's all about how good you are. Lord, all the blessings you've given us, let us never forget what you've done for us. Oh, hallelujah. Tonight, Lord, we know that you are delivered. We know that you are a healer. We know that you are a provider. We know that down to the very minute detail, you are there. You designed us, Lord. Hallelujah. You had a plan for our life before the foundations of the world. And that plan includes knowing you and sharing how good you are to those around. Father God, let us never forget your goodness. Never forget your strength. Never forget that you're always there with us. Your word says you will never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. And David knew, Psalm 37, 25, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging for yes, And oh, well, Lord, hallelujah. Let us love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, everything within us. Because that's what it's about. If you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. And we're going to lift you up tonight. We're going to praise you tonight. We're going to give you the glory tonight because, Lord, you're about changing hearts, minds, souls, and lives. Lord, as you called Peter to do something he couldn't do, you're calling us the same way. Just come. Just walk on that water. Do, do what that, that you've been called and born and destined to do. This is our time to walk out. Walk out on what you have promised God. Hallelujah. Because that's what it is. Walk out by faith. It's time to it, it, it's time to go out and say, God, yes. Yes. I surrender all. I surrender every part of my life to you. Because it's all about you, God. Lord, I will, I will, I will love you with all my heart, soul, and mind and body. Because it's all about you. In your wonderful holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> All right. Um, just uh, make sure you turn off your cell phones. And uh, July 8th, Eastern Gate House of Prayer. You see? Hallelujah. Friday yeah. night. Get, get together, guys. Let God speak and come together to hear him clearly. Everybody follow right. follow the distractions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's speak the word together. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. 
All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Brother Toby, would you come up and take the offering, please? You have to be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we're thankful to be here today. Speak to your people. Give you praise and glory, God. We thank you for this country that we have. As we enter our celebration of this year of independence, we just thank you for the independence we have in you, God. Yes. We know we lean in you for everything, for you are our Father. Only good things for us, God. We just ask that you will anoint your word tonight in our ears and our heart, God. We will retain the truth that you have spoken for us. Now, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Worship you, Lord. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Lord. Give it all to you, Lord. Hallelujah. For how beautiful are you, Lord. It's your love. It's your love. Just a moment there, you set me free, and saved me, and rescued me. Just a moment there, you set me free. Jesus. 
you're the light of the world. You step into my darkness. You, you've opened my eyes to let me see. Your love is real, your beauty that made my heart to adore you. You are the hope of this life, and I spend
the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank the Lord. God bless you. You can be seated and thank you, worship team. Abbreviated. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Love the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Tim, for opening and sharing your heart with us. Praise God and thank all of you for being here. And we'll get right into this because it's Wednesday night. Amen. I'll try to just be brief and get right on through it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, let's, uh, Mike, when you get situated up there and put your other hat on, hallelujah, we'll just go to Colossians chapter 2 and we'll read verses 6 through 10, Colossians 2 and verses 6 through 10. You know what happens a lot of times, uh, you know, you get, I don't want to say used to it, but you just, and I guess maybe we do, you just read the scriptures and you hear people quote scripture and it, and it becomes almost, uh, I don't know, not revelation anymore, but just information. And uh, it's revelation that changes everything. And uh, we really need to look at all Scripture as revelation. It's all insp inspired by God, so it is revelation. And it's just a question of us. Because it's, I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is it isn't until it becomes revelation to you that you actually act on it. I mean, we get lots of information. We're, we're bombarded with information all the time but we don't necessarily do anything about it. It just goes in one ear and out the other, praise the Lord. But uh, revelation should inspire us not only to believe, but to act and to live out the reality of uh, this revelation. Amen. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, not just the book of Revelation, but the entire Bible is a revelation of Jesus. Amen. And uh, the fact that we have Christ in us, it actually becomes a revelation of us if we can figure out how it is we stay connected to Christ. Now, he'll never leave us or forsake us, but that doesn't mean that we're conscious of his presence. And it's that consciousness, that awareness, that revelation, I think, that really releases God into the atmosphere, into the situations, into the circumstances of our lives. Amen? Amen. A lot of times I've heard Tim say this, but it's so true. Not only do we not pray until after the, pro the crisis, but we don't really involve God in everything until we find out it's something we can't do ourselves, <laughs> praise the Lord. Then all of a sudden we're trying to focus on uh, what God's promises are to us. And uh, that's true for everybody, I guess, to some extent. But the more aware we are of God, you know, perception is everything. It's reality. So if, if we have a perception of God, a, a, a belief that God is good and that God will do everything that he said he would do, then we'll have expectation instead of just hopes, and instead of just, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I hope God shows up. Now, we have promises here that we don't have to hope for. We just have to believe in. Amen? All right, so I've rambled enough, and Mike's got it going. And so here we are, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Now we know how we received him. We received him by grace. Amen. Uh, 
it's by the Spirit of God, so we're supposed to walk in that reality. Amen? Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. So outside of Christ, uh, not only are we incomplete, we're insufficient. But in Christ, we are, nothing's impossible, right? He's the fullness of the Godhead, and we're complete in Him. That gives us access to everything, amen, that God has. That's our inheritance. Praise the Lord. All right, so after, you know, after the resurrection, Jesus gave a, you know, it's what's called the Great Commission. And he called this uh, disciples together and, and basically told them what their assignment was. And by, I guess, proxy in a sense, I mean, but it's for everybody. It's for every believer. It's, it's a commission to us. It's, it's easy to read that and say, okay, that's what he told them. But he's telling us, that's why we have the Bible, amen. He's speaking to us through the word of God, amen. So it's God's assignment to every believer, to all of us, Amen. And let's look at that quickly. Uh, Mark chapter 16 and uh, verses 15 through 18. I know you're all familiar with it because we talk about it all the time and we refer to it, but it doesn't hurt to read it again. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils, they'll speak, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's the word of God. That's, that is our commission. That's what we're called to do. Now, we probably do all kinds of other things, and that's fine. But if we're doing all those other things and not doing this, and we're not fulfilling the commission, we're not uh, you know, completing the assignment, amen, that God has given us. Now, as amazing as that is, you know, as believers... Our mission is to take his message and deliver the message the way he did. Praise the Lord. I mean, within our own personalities and so forth, but we should be doing operating in power the way he was. We should be doing what he did and doing it the way he did it, with grace, amen, with mercy, with love. Praise the Lord. So we are his ambassadors, his messengers. Praise God. Now, I don't know about you, but to most people, myself included, that's, that can be intimidating to do what Jesus did the way Jesus did it. Amen? Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Because it's easy. Uh, we know our weaknesses. We know our frailties. We know our humanity. And so does the devil. And we're constantly talking about what we would like to do but not sure we can do and will God be with me and so on and so forth but he's given us a commission he's given us assignment to carry out the works that he did in the way that he did them amen we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works these things that we're talking about amen which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them now God ordained that we ought to be doing this Praise the Lord. So let God be true and every man a liar. Regardless of what we think, God has already made a plan, and the plan is we be like Jesus. We do what Jesus did, amen, in the way that he did it. So when Jesus issued that assignment back in uh, uh, Mark chapter 16, he didn't restrict it to the religious elite. He didn't restrict it to the to the most charismatic and the most powerful and the most attractive and all that. He gave it to a bunch of bungling disciples, amen, who had proven themselves to be, for the most part, dense when it came to spiritual things. He'd have to explain it, and then they still didn't get it. He'd do a miracle two days later, they're asking him, what, you know, what, what was that all about, amen? And 20 centuries later, most of us aren't a whole lot different. Praise the Lord. I'm not picking on anybody tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm being all inclusive here. Hallelujah. But we just feel incapable. We feel inadequate for the challenge, for the demand, for the, for the need, for the situations and for the circumstances. 
but we are wrong. Praise God. We do have what it takes. Yeah. Amen. This isn't a pep talk. Amen. It's just the truth. Because God has amaz amazingly given us a supernatural power source. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he, also, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now, I, I'm guessing the disciples were like us, and they were a little skeptical. Somebody might do this, but I'm not so sure about me. Amen? But then Jesus goes on to give them some clues about how God would empower them to carry on the commission that Christ had given him. Amen? John chapter 14, uh, verse 16 and 17. Now let's, let's really do this. I mean, let's put ourselves here. God is talking to us. He's not talking to people 2,000 years ago. They didn't have this to read. They experienced it. He, wrote it. he had it written out so that we could see and then act on the promises and the truth of God's word. So, I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Say, he's in me. He's in me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. All right. John 16, verses 7 through 11. We have the Comforter. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Spirit of Christ. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged. Praise the Lord. So I know we've read that in the past and thought he's, you know, he's judging us, he's critiquing us, uh, he's, 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 uh, he's finding sin in us and all that. But it's, it's showing, it's, it's talking about three different things here. It's talking about the world that's unsaved, he convicts them of their sin. How did he do that? By the law. Amen. Convicts us of our righteousness because he has been received, accepted by God, after the sacrifice. So if he's righteous, we believe in him, we're automatically the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And of judgment, because Satan has already been judged. Amen. And everyone who does not come to Christ is under that same judgment. Praise the Lord. All right, so Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, that's us. We, we've been empowered to carry out the commission, to, to complete. A, I mean, I know it's a finished work that Jesus did, but we are to carry it on. I mean, to, to continue, amen, this revelation of God in man. Hallelujah. Well, you can take it for what it's worth. Praise the Lord. We are, Jesus said, I'm not ashamed to call you brother. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. God is still wanting to be revealed in humanity. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's our, and he has the confidence in us because, by virtue of the fact that he's given us his spirit that we will do it, that we can do it, and that we will, amen, that we will do it. Praise the Lord. Now let me show you a couple. There's, a, there's twofold benefits here for us when it comes to the Holy Spirit. M many others, but I just want to focus on a couple of them here briefly. Uh, first of all, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, tells us what, what one or part of the benefits are is that the fruit of the Spirit, which is, and I like this, number one, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's a, that's a benefit. That these are benefits from God. Amen. If we're confident of the Holy Spirit within us, God's presence always for us, amen, then the fruit of the Spirit is a natural thing. 
If we abide in him and he abides in us, we will bring forth much fruit. We're not producing the fruit. We're just connected, and by the power of the Spirit, the fruit is then produced. Praise the Lord. So not only should we be experiencing that, but the people that we in, interact with should be experiencing this as well. I mean, they ought to be feeling some love, right? They ought to sense the joy, amen? Uh, they ought to realize the long-suffering. I mean, how many of you suffered long with somebody? Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about people, you know, that you just got to deal with. And uh, so all of these things, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. All right? And then number two is verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, that's, I say it's a benefit because obviously it's something we can do or he wouldn't be telling us to do it, right? So if we live in the Spirit, we are living in the Spirit. We're spirit beings. We've been born again. So let's walk in the Spirit. It's kind of what he said to, uh, earlier in Galatians where he told him, he said, you, having begun in the Spirit, are you so foolish now that you're going to try to finish this thing in the, in the flesh? So the only way we're going to do what it is he's assigned us to do is by the Spirit. Believe me, we're not going to get it done in the flesh. So we have to walk in the Spirit. We have to be in tune with God, one with the Spirit of God. Amen? So His Spirit reveals Christ through us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen? And He does it to those that we interact with. In other words, He reveals Christ, the Spirit does, through us to the people that we are in, uh, you know, in fellowship with, or in, 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 in uh, boy, my mind has just gone blank here, but the people that we interact with, whoever they might be, wherever they are, God wants to be revealed to them, and he does it through us, and he does it by his spirit. The Holy Spirit does the work. This is what we got to understand. We're freaking out about what we can do. This isn't about what we can do. It's about what the Spirit, he said, I'm going to send you the Spirit. It will empower so that God can do this through a human being. Praise the Lord. So it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work. We're just the vehicle. He said, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we're in the Spirit, let's walk in the Spirit. In other words, let's be a vehicle for the Spirit, amen, to get from point A to point B or to wherever it is, amen, that God wants to move, amen, because that's what God's doing. We're the vehicle, amen, that brings God, amen, to, uh, or brings His Spirit to wherever we are. So whoever we're interacting with, that Spirit can be revealed so that God can be known to be real. Hallelujah. Now, we don't have to be the initiators. We don't have to be the sustainers of this. It's the work of God. God's work in the world does not demand that we initiate it or that we sustain it. The Holy Spirit is already at work. Praise the Lord. He is the dynamic. Amen. He's the interactive presence of the one true living God in humans. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost, man. I mean... I'm telling you, that's God's plan. That's his purpose. That's what he does. That's what he wants to continue to do. We don't even have to be religious. In fact, we shouldn't be religious. Praise the Lord. God doesn't want us to be religious people. God wants us to simply live life in Christ, aware that we are filled with his presence and that he wants to manifest. Amen. In His grace, He does not leave us alone to take on the commission by ourselves. We began in grace, we finish in grace. He doesn't expect us to do it. He's going to do it by grace. He's going to do it through us. Praise the Lord. John 14, verse 12. What's that old song? Act naturally. Act naturally. Amen. We are naturally supernatural. The sooner we grasp this and begin to walk this out in our natural life, supernatural things will happen. They'll just happen because we are supernatural, amen? We have a supernatural God inside of us, dwelling in our spirit, one with our spirit. The more aware we are of that, the more confident we are that the Holy Spirit will do what he can do, amen, through us. Praise the Lord. He just needs a vehicle. He just needs to get to Walmart. He needs somebody to get him to Walmart. Now, God is everywhere, I understand that, but he manifests through people. He shows himself 
mighty on our behalf. Amen. Praise the Lord. So just tell him, I'm your vehicle, baby. Yeah. You know, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Hallelujah. Right. Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's, that's powerful. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's not jealous. Jesus is not like, uh, you know, afraid that we're going to get some, some notoriety out of this. All the glory goes to God. Amen? Praise the Lord. In our own weakness, in our inabilities, God's going to do this. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Praise the Lord. He supernaturally empowers and equips us for whatever task is before us. Amen? God gives us the power to perform whatever He asks us to do. Amen? He doesn't tell us to go do something and say, well, good luck, come on back and let me know how it worked out for you. It's Him. I was talking to somebody here a while back. I can't remember now who it was, but there was an old preacher when, when we were in Texas when I first got saved, and he had a healing ministry. Do you remember what his name was, Sally? I can't think of his name for the life of me. But nevertheless... Really nice guy, old old man, older than I am now back then. But he said, he was telling me one time, he said, Nathan, you know, uh, see, I was just getting into ministry, and I'd had some people tell me not to come back to Iowa and a bunch of other stuff. But nevertheless, he was telling me, just trust the Lord. Just, you know, just you listen to the Lord, and prophecy ought to line up. You know, God speaks to both ends and so on and so forth. So anyway, he was telling me, he said, when I was a young preacher, he said, I was having... A lot of, uh, seeing a lot of miracles in my ministry, people being healed left and right. And so he, he this, is, this would have been in the, probably the 30s when this was taking place, because it was in the 80s when he was talking to me. And he said, uh, so I, I got this big tent, because literally the churches, you know, in southeast Texas and Louisiana, they weren't very big. Pentecostal churches especially were relatively small uh, gatherings at that time. And so he got this tent. He bought this big tent because he could get more people in the tent than he could get in the churches. Plus, he thought he might draw more unsaved people to the tent because they didn't feel as intimidated as they might, you know, go into a, a church itself. So, anyway, he gets this big tent, and he said he had a sign made. And the sign said, Brother, and what was his name? I, I wish I could think of it. But anyway, what Brother Barnes. Barnes, that was it, Barnes. Brother Barnes, healing ministry. And he said he was sitting, it was in the afternoon, he was, they were having a big meeting that night, and uh, he was sitting under a tree out in front just having a glass of tea or water or something, and he said, I looked up and I saw that sign, and I, Brother Barnes Healing Ministry, and he said, I heard an audible voice, and the Lord said, never heard of it. <laughs> Amen. And so he got up and tore the sign down. God continued to use him, and he, God continued to heal through him and everything else. But I thought it was, you know, really to the point. Yeah. God is doing the work. It's the Spirit of God in us. Amen. And as long as we're conscious of that, God will do anything. Amen. He wants, he wants more glory. He wants more people healed. He wants everybody saved. He, want, he, he wants that. And he'll, he'll definitely use us to do it. Praise the Lord. So just confuse yourself with God. We have the fullness of the Godhead in us, but He's still God. Amen? And He wants to work through us. We don't have to be intimidated. God's doing the work. We just have to get Him, amen, to wherever the work needs to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, hallelujah. He gives us the power to perform whatever He asks us to do. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Thank you, honey. I've been trying to remember His name for two weeks now. Barnes, Brother Barnes, yeah. Yeah, 20, uh, 22 verses 37 through 40. Brother Barnes, yeah. Never heard of it. Praise the Lord. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Just a, repeating basically what Tim's been saying in the whole uh, preliminary aspect of the, of the service this morning. But a lot of believers don't take that seriously. Amen? 
these two commandments, all the law and the prophets hang on that. In other words, everything's completed in those two commandments. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, we know it. I mean, we quote the scripture and so forth. And, and, uh, but I wonder if we take it as seriously as God does. I mean, we know the story of the Good Samaritan. And, but when it comes to actually loving people, it can be a struggle. Whether it's lying wounded in a ditch or someone who holds views that we despise or lives in a way that we don't approve of. See, we, we can be selective. We can avoid the people we don't want to love and just love the ones we like, the ones we get along with. But the truth is, God wants us to love everybody. Amen? Jesus didn't put any qualifications on the love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's everybody. He just wants us to love, period. We were talking here a few days ago. This is still in my mind. I haven't developed anything dramatic here, but I'm just seeing it over and over and over that the love of God is the, is the means by which the miraculous take place. Jesus went about having compassion on everybody. God so loved the world that he gave. We're trying to do some things, and when we don't do it out of love, Paul said it's just noise. It's just a lot of human carrying on. But when we do it in love, immediately God is released because God is love. So if, we're gonna, if we, we need to challenge ourselves, it's to love. Amen? And love isn't just a, some smarmy, you know, feeling. <laughs> love is a decision. I mean, love is a choice. I mean, if you don't believe me, get married. I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm just saying, 20 years, it's a decision, believe me, because you're going to have plenty of opportunities to not feel a great deal of love. Amen? I mean, it, it, the feelings come and go based on how you're feeling and how the spouse is behaving and, and all those things. So it's a commitment. You make a decision. I'm going to love you. Just like David said, I will love the Lord. Amen. And that's what we do with our, in our relationships. We make a choice. We're going to love them, and we do love them. But there's times when we don't necessarily like them, praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm just saying, God, in order for God to operate, there needs to be love. You, I mean, let's face it. If God is love, you, how, how can you have a God moment without there being love involved? Whether it's a healing, whether it's deliverance, whether that is the that is the reality of God. Right. So where there's love, God's present. Yes. Where there isn't love, not so much. Right. He's still there, just like he's everywhere, but he's not necessarily moving in that particular situation, not manifesting, because if he manifests, love is going to be the display. Right. Hallelujah. In some form or another. Praise the Lord. So he wants us to love, period. People that we disagree with people that are in need, enemies, right. people with different sexual orientation. Right. Sorry, yeah. but that's the truth. That's what we got to do. I'm not saying we got to embrace everything they do, but we yeah. got to love them. Yeah. Jesus loved them. He died for them knowing that they were going to be whatever they are and do whatever they do. Yeah. See, I, what, that's what I'm saying. You know, we might have, without realizing it, we become kind of selective in terms of the people that we love and also in the way that we look at other people. You know, you might put up with a person who has a drug problem, but a homosexual you've got a real issue with because you just can't quite get your head around the whole idea of it, right? Or maybe just disgust you, right? But God feels identical toward them. He, he, there's no such thing as a big sin and a little sin. It's just either you believe God, you either trust in God, or you're in sin. And God so loved the world that he gave. While we were yet sinners, while they're still sinners, God loves them. Now, how are they going to know that unless somebody who has God in them is willing to treat them with love and respect? Praise the Lord. It's, it's a cliche, but it's very true. You, you know, you, you can accomplish more with, with sugar 
than you can with salt. We, we need to have a sweet spirit, praise the Lord, not something abrasive that is just condemning and judgmental and critiquing and so forth. If Jesus had had that kind of a spirit, we'd all be in a big mess right now. See, we have the Bible, and because we have the Bible, we have these incredible insights into the depth of God's love for us. That's really what stabilizes most of us. That's what really, uh, when a person gets born again, truly born again, where they understand this is by the grace of God, by the love of God, there's a sense of acceptance that gives you um, confidence, right? People that are rejected all the time are not very confident people. They're usually neurotic, you know, and just uncomfortable to be around. But total acceptance gives a person confidence. Amen? And that's what the world needs. That's what we need as believers, and that's what the world needs. They need to know, they need to know that they are accepted, that they are loved, in spite of their individual messes. Praise the Lord. So we know that because we have the Bible. And so it gives us all this insight into how much God loves us and how much God cares about us. Amen? And, and then, of course, because he became a human and lived among us and revealed his purposes and plans for us, we know that through the Bible. And then through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, we have a, a pretty good idea of God's love, of how God loves us, how God feels about us. And because we know these things, we think we know enough about God to have figured him out. We think we know him enough to, to treat him as the sum of his parts. But the Old Testament writers knew better. Look at this in Job chapter 26 and verse 14. Remember, this God is in you. This Jehovah, this Yahweh, this creator of all things, the sustainer of all things, is in us. It never ceases to amaze me. Lo, these are parts of his ways. And we think, we know him because we know some parts that we know the sum, amen? But these are the parts of the way. But how little a portion is heard of him, but the thunder of his power, who can understand? Praise the Lord. We know some stuff about God, but believe me, we don't know the totality of this. Praise God. Psalms 145.3. There is no limit to God. There is nothing that is impossible. Praise God. Lo, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. So wherever you've gone with God, whatever God has done for you, you've just touched the surface. He's so much beyond anything that we can imagine. And it's all for us. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 9, verse 24. Let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. This is what the Lord likes. Amen? Loving kindness, judgment, righteousness. Praise the Lord. He delights in it. So how much can we know about God? How much are we supposed to know about God? Here's the balance. In this life, you can never know. You can never know God fully. But you can know him truly. And that's enough. Because God always does something unexpected. He's always wanting to do a new thing, right? So there must be some things about God that we don't know or it wouldn't be new, right? but we can know the truth of God, that he's for us and not against us, that he's a God of love, that a God that wants to do the supernatural through his people. Right. Amen? Wants us to be a continuation of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 
verses uh, 12 and 13. I can't tell you how many weddings over 30 years or more that I've done and how many of them have I've used 1 Corinthians 13 because it's appropriate, you know. Love never fails. It, you know, it's not judgmental. It's not jealous. It's not vicious. It's not mean and so on and so forth. But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Now I think that's really cool because I, I, we, don't, we don't know God's totality. We know the sum of the parts. We, we know parts of God. and we, We've seen things, but we don't know, the, know him completely. Therefore, we don't know us completely because the major part of us is God, the spirit of God that's in us. That's why when we see him face to face, although we know in part now, then we will know even as also we are known. Sinless. We'll be like Jesus. Amen. With a glorified body and so on. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, which translates love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, I think he's trying to tell us something here. That when we when we, now we're seeing some of God. But when we see God to, totally, when we see him like face to face, we'll know him and we'll know ourselves in a way that we've never known ourselves either. And the very next thing that he does is talk about faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love because that's God's nature. And that's what we are by the Spirit. In order to operate in the power of God, we have to get closer to the nature of God. And to do that, we got to get rid of some biases, some prejudices, some attitudes. I'm talking about lifestyles and, and all the things that maybe we're uncomfortable with and Jesus went about healing everybody. The lepers. It was, it was a sin. For him, he, he defiled himself if he touched a leper. He didn't care. That leper needed a touch as much as they needed a healing. They were untouchables. They were totally isolated. And people that are going through whatever it is they're going through, whether it's a lifestyle or whether it's just outright destructive behavior. Most of them need a touch. Most of them need to be accepted, to know that they're, they're still valuable, that, that somebody still cares enough to reach out to them. I'm telling you, if we would do that, we would see miracles. We would see miracles. Because God would be there in a tangible, supernatural way. Praise the Lord. God is love full of mercy and grace. And just like our salvation, our relationship with Christ isn't performance-based. It's based on his love and his grace. Perfection isn't required. In fact, it's not even expected. But if we learn to love, you know, faith worketh by love. The spirit of love in us will accomplish every challenge that's before us. Praise the Lord. And by so doing, it will reveal our risen Savior, our God, and our Father to the orphans of this world. I'm talking about spiritual orphans. If there's something different between us and Jesus, I would I would just guess that it's he loved without limits. And that's where we struggle. It isn't that we don't believe God. It isn't that we don't love God in our limited abilities as humans. It's our problem is loving other humans. And so God came into a human so that he could express that love to all humanity. And if the church has dropped the ball, I believe that's where it is. We love each other, pretty much. 
praise the Lord. But it's the people that aren't part of our group that we don't necessarily love. We may go out with a, uh, a charge to pray for the sick, but do we love them? You know, I mean, do we, do we make that kind of a commitment? Praise God. I, I'm just saying, I think, first of all, it has to be a decision. Emotions may come and go, but there has to be a decision at some point. Not only will I love the Lord my God, but I will love my neighbor as myself. Praise the Lord. See, the orphans in this present darkness will see a light shine and they'll experience the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And they'll do that through us. Miracles, signs, and wonders are nothing more than manifestations of God. Just like love yes. is a manifestation of God. There, there, there's no difference, really. It's the same thing. So love, miracles, signs, and wonders, those are treasures. Those are God himself in earthen vessels. Amen. We need to break the pitcher and let the light shine. Amen, like Gideon. Yes. You know, we got a pitcher with a light in it, but most of us, you know, we're walking around like this. We don't want to break the pitcher. It's a good pitcher, praise the Lord. We need to break them yes. and let God out. Amen. And see what he'll do. Praise the Lord. Yes. See, you don't have to do it. It's not you that does it. You're just, again, you're the means by which God gets to the place where you are yes. to interact with the people that you interact with. Yes. And we'll do that with love. Hey, it may mean biting your lip a little bit. It may mean turning your cheek. I'm not talking about being abused, but I am talking about, you know, going a little further than the next person when it comes to trying to reach out to somebody and let them know that we're serious. That, that people uh, are, are cynics when it comes to Christians, and we've made them cynical. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's our fault. I don't mean us necessarily in this room, but right. Christianity has become such a religious thing that people have a hard time relating on an individual basis, have a hard time relating to it in a, from a human perspective. Amen. And this is where we can bring this great and glorious and almighty God into a human situation yes. Amen. where they can experience it. Amen? And that's the commission. That's the challenge. Go you all the world. Yes. Guess what? Des Moines is part of that world. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. We can have an impact because God is for us. Yes. God wants that person more than we do, no matter who it is. Yes. Amen? So if we'll just go in love, I'm convinced we're going to see more and more of God's manifestation in all of our relationships. Yes, Can you say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Amen. Give him a hand clap tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being patient tonight. The Lord bless you. Go in the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we'll see you back here Sunday, hopefully. Have a great rest of the week. Dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.